Mark Fodor is the campaign coordinator of Defenders in Development. He's, um, of course, from the Coalition for Human Rights in Development, CHRD, uh, whose director had uh, joined us last time, Siddharth Akali. Uh, Mark joins us from Budapest. He will give us a broad overview before getting into the specifics about Bangladesh. Mark, we have no clue what you're going to say, but please give it to us now. Uh, hey. Uh, thank you, Vidya, and thank you. Uh, there are a few tough acts to follow, and I'll actually limit what I say to make it quite short. Uh, I also think I'm I'm a bit of a on the the side here, not not the main focus of the talks here. Um, but just briefly, what a, a broad overview. Um, well, I'm talking about the banks as well. Uh, here we've seen uh, with COVID-19 that the banks have come in and they're just going in really as a giving up money probably faster than they ever have uh, before. Uh, and a lot of that money is going to supporting the emergency responses. Now, uh, Ryan did touch a bit on that. Uh, I want to get into a bit more detail of what these emergency responses are that these banks are covering. And again, we're talking here about the World Bank, uh, but also the for in Bangladesh's case, the Asian Development Bank, the Asian I Infrastructure Investment Bank. Now. They're covering the public health response. They're covering uh, they're, they're covering issues around dissemination of information, issues around contact tracing. They're basically covering, uh, and I'm going to focus more on the Bangladeshi context. This is happening around the globe, but also conscious of time. Um, basically, they're they're covering a program that in Bangladesh is known as the National Preparedness, uh, sorry, it's the, I've got to get the name right here, but I think it's the National COVID Preparedness, National Preparedness and Response Plan for COVID-19, sorry. Now, um, this, and from the human rights perspective, what are we seeing? Uh, you, those of you in Bangladesh will know about reprisals against journalists that will be criticizing the government. Uh, you'll know uh, about some militarization contexts that are quite problematic. Uh, and there are other uh, issues as well that, that are definitely going to be coming up or have come up that are all part of how the government is responding to the COVID-19 situation. And for those of us following the institutions, our concern is that these institutions have these lofty claims about being for public participation, for stakeholder engagement, making sure they're contributing in a positive way. Now, apart from the fact that obviously, uh, or if it's not obvious to everyone, these are loans, so these are actually creating more debt uh, at a time when there, are e there is economic hardship. Uh, we have the added concern that they're contributing to a problematic situation and the way they're doing so, when I mentioned this National Preparedness and Response Plan for COVID-19, if you read through it, it is explicitly written there that law enforcement will be part of how the, uh, the solution will be implemented. Uh, explicit, there's explicit description of technologies that could be dual use for surveillance, this contact tracing. And the banks were part of the preparation of this national preparedness and response plan. So we have a, a situation where on the surface, if you read through it, it's not going to say abuse is going to happen, but it clearly is open to abuse. And there clearly have been situations of abuse in the, in the Bangladeshi context and not just in the Bangladeshi context, obviously. So I, I don't want to be pointing the finger to Bangladesh as being the worst player on the planet. I come from Hungary. We've had our finger, fingers pointed at us and rightfully so, uh, or at our government, I should say, not us. Um, so really what I wanted to do and, and really give a very brief uh, brief overview and really open it up for questions, if there are any, is, is just to, to point out that we have these institutions where we are, and just a bit of background on what's going on with the Defenders in Development Campaign too, we are looking, and I am looking to mobilize uh, NGOs from different sectors to challenge these institutions so that they, when they do get into deals with governments, they do make sure that those standards that they have in place are maintained. But also, and this is getting 
taken one step further, that we are thinking about the fact that actually we're generating debt with this. So is this the best way to go? There is a large pressure for debt relief uh, at this point, and, and much of our constituency is also pushing for that. So that is my very, uh, I hope, quick enough overview. Uh, I really don't want to get into much detail because I realize there, a lot of this is about energy today. So I, I think I'm a bit of a showing what other issues are out there. <laughs> uh, and I'll end with that. Thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm.